out there with respect to uh, the medical skill courses. Okay, so on that note, we'll be starting our presentation. It will be uh, of one hour. Towards the end, we'll be sharing you feedback form. Make sure you are uh, filling that form. Okay. On that note, I believe the screen is visible. Hi, Giran. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So, guys, first of all, warm welcome from Learn Medics. This particular mentorship is in collaboration with the Swasa Group. It is considered it as an employment awareness program, uh, and the topics that we'll be discussing is medical representative, medical billing, medical tourism, and pharmacovigilance. So we'll be talking in detail about all these medical skill courses. Okay. On that note, we'll talk about what is Learn Medics. So first of all, warm greetings from Learn Medics. We are an edtech company that is predominantly focusing upon medical skill courses. Whatever the skill courses that can be there in the medical domain, we are focusing upon it. And few of the courses we will be discussing in detail. And few more courses are in contention. Down the line with time, these courses will be part of Learn Medics as well. Okay. On that note, like I mentioned, we are a tech company. We are medically inclined. And uh, predominantly, we are focusing on the medicine, the pharmacy, and the nursing sector. Okay. Now, since we are talking about skill courses, okay, so let's start, consider this as a storytelling uh, session and like, let's start on that note key, why it is important to skill up, why it is important to skill up in this particular competitive landscape. Like we are currently living in that particular landscape where not only we, we have to compete with humans, but we have to compete with artificial intelligence itself and things have become very competitive. And it has become very, very, very necessary for us to skill up. On that note, there are certain data that I'll be sharing it with you. As you can see, the World Economic Forum has said, by 2025, 54% of the employees all across the globe, they need to skill up. If at all they are not skilling up, they are the ones who will be getting hampered with their career. As simple as that. 54% of the world population, they need to skill up by hook or by crook. Else, somewhere or the other, you will be in the downside. As simple as that. This is just the data that has been released by the World Economic Forum. And we have very good reasons to talk about it. Like, you know, that with the advent of AI and automation, it has, it has been very crucial for us to skill up. And we have some certain good results as well. Like we have NSDC, the National State Development Council, they have said, they have done a survey in that they have found that 80% of the youth, they get employed within six months of their training. They need to get enrolled in a training and within six months, 80% of them will be getting enrolled. Then there's another data by the Ministry of Skill Development. They have said that the apprenticeship program, it has a success rate of over 70%. The placement rate is over 70%. And then there is another data by the International Labour Organization that have said that the on-job training program, it can increase. Like they are doing their job. Apart from doing their job, they're also focusing on certain training programs. That particular model is increasing the employability chance of a graduate by 40%. So I believe you might be understanding why it is important to skill up in this particular generation that we are living in and like we have a bunch of courses if at all i talk about the people who are from the technological uh, technological background we have web development data science cloud com computing Pro, uh, people from the uh, mba background we have uh, financial literacy business analyst, analyst courses investment banking people from the commerce background we have the, any day we have a certification on supply chain management digital marketing product management coming to the medical sector there is a great growing trend for certifications in robotics and surgery, AI in medicine, precision medicine, okay, and that way. Now, given that the vision of Learn Medics, with respect to the vision of Learn Medics, with respect to this particular mentorship, which we are about to continue with, we'll be predominantly focusing upon the medical skill courses for students who are from pharmacy background and who are from life science background. Why? Point number one. Because no one is predominantly talking about people from that background. Okay, first thing. Second thing is the market dynamic as well. Why I'm talking about 
the medical skill courses. There is a visual presentation in front of your eyes. Okay. So the first of it is you are quite aware there are a bunch of sectors. There are a bunch of sectors. If there is a manufacturing sector, it will come manufacturing uh, products sector. It will come under the industry sector, the banking, the mutual fund. Okay. It will come under the financial services. Whatever the tech-based jobs are there, it will come under the technology sector. So there is a concept that I want you guys to understand. It stands with compound annual growth rate. There's a concept called compound annual growth rate. What does this mean? It means year on year, how much an economy or how much a sector is growing. An economy, a sector or a company, year on year, how much and by what percentage they are growing. That, that particular term is called compound annual growth rate. And in front of your app is the data of the various sectors. I am literally talking about all the leading sectors of Indian economy. The industry sector, it has a CAGR of 4.7%. That means by the rate of nearly 5%, this particular sector is growing. Talking about the financial sector, the CAGR is 5.8%. The technology sector, the CAGR is 6.3%. And the healthcare sector, the CAGR is 9.5%. That means among all the leading sectors of Indian economy, healthcare sector is growing. It is growing at a faster rate. If at all, I bifurcate. We have healthcare IT that is growing at a rate of 12.5%. We have digital health segment that is growing at a rate of 20.5%. Medical billing is a part of this particular segment. So, in total, you can understand that the medical sector or the healthcare sector is exponentially growing in comparison to the leading sectors of the Indian economy. Okay, on that note, and along with, like I mentioned, no particular edtech company is predominantly talking about these certification courses like medical billing, medical tourism, pharmacovigilance. On that note, this particular mentorship has been uh, scheduled. And on that note, I will be starting with each and every segment in detail. Four topics will be covered. Medical coding billing, medical representative, pharmacovigilance, and then we'll conclude things by medical tourism. Okay. Now, on that note, let's start with medical billing, medical coding. So, let's try to understand what is medical billing, how medical billing and why medical billing. I'll try to, I'll make sure that you guys have a clear concrete, you have a clear concrete understanding of what medical billing is. Yes, I believe someone has raised their hand up. Huh? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Now, uh, on that note, let's start with medical billing. So, very bit by bit, consider it as a story. I'll be telling a story to you what medical billing is and we'll be uh, like, I'll be telling you each and every detail about it. Okay, so, first of all, medical billing is the process of submitting claims to the insurance company for the reimbursement of the medical services provided to the patient. There is a patient, they have availed for medical services in the name of an insurance company, like whatever the medical services they have taken from a hospital, they have tied up with a certain insurance company. In order to claim that insurance, the medical billing process is done. As simple as that. Okay. In order to claim that insurance, the entire medical billing and medical coding segment is done. Okay. In a very layman term, I'll tell you, suppose some 30 to 40 pages of document we have. This 30 to 40 pages, as a medical biller, medical coder, you need to summarize that document into one page. You need to submit that to an insurance company and you have to get the reimbursement done. The 30, 40 pages of document needs to be converted into one single page. That one single page needs to be sent to the insurance company and the reimbursement needs to be done. As simple as that. Let's try to visualize it again with a working model. Suppose for a minute, let's visualize. Consider yourself as a medical biller or medical coder. Step one would involve that you get a patient information. You'll be getting the patient information. 
it will be around 30 to 40 pages you need to apply medical coding to it as a part of the second step the medical coding segment includes there are two basically two types of medical coding one is icd 10 cm one is cpt so i'll be discussing predominantly about icd 10 cm since we are in a time crunch so there's icd 10 cm there's cpt once you're applying the medical coding to the patient information you will notice that the report is getting summarized whatever the 30 40 pages are there it is getting converted into one single page how that science happen i will be discussing it with you you don't have to worry about it now that that one page you need to submit to the insurance company through a means of an ehr software it stands for electronic health record and that through that particular software itself you need to get the reimbursement done as simple as that i'll try to explain it again to you guys yeah you will be getting the patient information it will be around 30 to 40 pages you will be applying medical coding to it we have icd 10 cm we have cpt once you're applying medical coding to it you need to summarize the report you need to summarize the report as soon as you're summarizing the one page report you need to submit that to the ehr software for the reimbursement to happen and accordingly through this ehr software only the reimbursement will be done as simple as that we'll be discussing in depth about it once we'll be discussing the market dynamic and then i'll be telling you the working model as well in detail okay so like i mentioned what is uh, medical billing now i'll be discussing why medical billing like why i'm so much talking about medical billing so as you can recall in the previous slide i told that the healthcare sector is exponentially growing and somewhat medical billing is going hand in hand synonymously it is also going growing as well it is growing exponentially there is a projection in 2023 the 10000 crore worth of a market of a medical billing is going to be 20000 crore that means in a matter of 5 years the market is going to double up if we talked about the indian scenario if we talk about the uh, global scenario if we talk about the global scenario 13 billion dollar worth of a market is going to be 40 billion dollar worth of a market that means ki in a matter of 10 years the market is going to triple up when we talk about the world scenario so like this is a huge exponential growth if we talk uh, like if we consider things statistically this is exponentially growing you very well know we have already discussed that uh, suppose the uh, industry sector it is at 4.7 financial sector is at 5.8 comparing to the leading sectors of indian economy medical billing is growing at least at a rate of three times three times with the leading sectors of indian economy and we have very good reasons to support why medical billing is going one of the primary reason is that post covid the healthcare sector has taken an exponential uh, like it has taken an exponential turn towards the growth who has given us a data ki by 2030 the global health exp expenditure is going to be 10 trillion dollar okay outsourcing for medical billing has exponentially increased it has increased it is it has an year on year increase of 20% the job role is increasing by 10% the EHR software, which I discussed with you guys, its usage is increasing by 15%. Demand stands at 25%. And the job rule is increasing by 10%. What does that mean? That means the demand is more than the supply. And moreover, we have a very big reason that the government is actively participating. The government is actively participating to promote medical billing and medical uh, coding. Like we have Pradhan Mantri Janarogi Rojana, they have said, Ki, please simplify the medical billing process so that it is very easy for the students, uh, sorry, it is very easy for the patients to get enrolled and get the reimbursement. With the Digital India Mission, we are promoting the adoption of EHR software. We have National Health Policy, they have said, Ki, please kindly maintain a national registry for medical coders and billers. Then we have Arishman Bharat Digital Mission, they have said, Ki, please create a digital ecosystem. I believe you might have got an idea that if at all we are converting the pages, like 30 page, 40 pages are getting converted into one page and it is getting feeded into a software. That means it has something to do with the digitalization. We are digitalizing a patient health record and it is synonymous to what is the vision uh, with the visions of Ayushman Bharat Distant Mission. Then we have Skill India Mission. 
this particular mission is offering training programs for medical coders and billers and synonymous to the skill india mission learn medics also has launched a training program for medical billing and now we'll be discussing in detail like i'll just give you an overview of the, what are the things that will be taught in this training program so like i mentioned just like the job role just like the job role the job role requires you to convert procedures into code it re requires you to do the insurance it requires you to do the do reimbursement just like the job role of a medical biller or a medical coder is we have designed the training model please follow the color coding just like the job role if the job role requires you to convert procedures into code we have medical terminology and coding system as our subjects if the job role requires you to do the insurance submission we have the eho software and the insurance procedure as your subject if the reimbursement is your job role then we have hipaa guidelines and billing guidelines in order to equip you with the career based knowledge on that note just a brief overview medical terminology will be taught medical coding will be taught billing software will be taught insurance procedure will be taught reimbursement will be taught and regulations will be taught since we are in time crunch i'll be just focusing upon the important topics like there is a topic called medical terminology people from life science background and pharmacy background they, you guys are very well equipped with this particular segment it will deal with the basic word structure very basic word structure like suppose cardiotomy in cardiotomy cardio stands for heart tomy stands to cut that means cardiotomy it's something synonymous with a procedure that you're doing in the heart so that way medical terminology terms of the diseases and the disorder the body functions and the human anatomy terms related to the structure and the function of the human body these medical terms will be taught to you it is a theory subject why you need to be equipped this theory subject because as a medical biller and as a medical coder it is very essential for you to identify the disease if at all you know the correct terms if at all you have in depth knowledge of the terms you can understand the disease you can identify the disease very easily and if at all you are identifying the disease very easily then only you can apply the right code to it like i mentioned two codes are there icd 10 cm and cpt only icd 10 cm i'll be discussing over here first step includes you to identify the disease second step includes you to apply the code to it there is an international like there is a who based standard it is a classification for whatever the diseases are there in the world there is a classification system called or a medical coding system called icd 10 cm it stands for international classification of diseases 10th revision and clinical modification this has been authorized by the who in a very layman term i'm explaining you what is icd 10 cm every indian in this country is entitled to a pan card right every indian in this country is entitled to pan card pan card is unique in structure pan card is alpha numeric that means it is a code that is alpha numeric in structure it is unique for every individual right these are the same functions that icd 10 cm has for a disease consider icd 10 cm a pan card level identification but for the diseases whatever the diseases are there in the world it can be as simple as a common cold or as complex as a stage 4 kidney it can be coded it can be reverted down back to a single code whatever the diseases are there in the world they have been listed down in a dictionary imagine a dictionary it has all the diseases in the world all the diseases and their variants it has been documented in it and a certain code has been assigned to it a certain unique code has been assigned to it that code is has alphabets also that code has numbers also in it let's try to understand icd 10 cm with a pop culture reference here's a, here i've added a pop culture reference from uh, um, uh, the very prominent uh, loki series so suppose skin cancer is there for skin cancer the code is c44.9 for pancreatic cancer the code is c25.9 
for the leukemia the, uh, the code is 92.9 for lung cancer the code is 78.9 for prostate cancer the code is 61.9 so you might be seeing a pattern the pattern here is ki whatever the cancer based diseases are there they are starting with letter c that way or whatever the behavioral diseases are there like suppose there is f32 is for clinical depression f33 is for uh, like uh, recurrent clinical depression something that way okay f31.4 is a code for like bipolar disorder so like i mentioned there is like in a very layman term i'm summarizing icd densium there is a dictionary all the diseases they have been coded and they have been alphabetically arranged as simple as that whatever the diseases are there total 70000 codes are there so you can very well understand whatever the diseases are there their variants there have all been compiled into it and moreover icd 10 cm is a dynamic list year on year at least 300 to 400 codes are getting added like uh, like it, it gets added year on year okay on that note we are concluding icd 10 cm one final subject that i would like to mention is a hipaa compliance it stands for health insurance portability and accountability act this particular subject will also be covered in the medical billing the basic job of hipaa compliance i have added another pop culture reference here for you they are basically the watcher they are basically the watcher they are the legal team they are looking over the legal aspect of the medical billing their sole job is that in any case the patient information must not get leaked as simple as that is the job of the hipaa compliance so these are the few topics if at all you want a detailed explanation of all the six topics you can fill the respective google forms in the chat box and we'll be uh, telling you in detail we'll be discussing cpt as well what is the ehr software okay since we are in time crunch we need to move on coming to uh, companies so few companies that are there these are the companies that are listed for placement once you're completing your training your profiles will be sent to these companies we are providing placement assistance and few additions are also there there's a company called reef case there's a company called medrec there's a company called uh, v technology okay so since we are living in the digital space we are living in the medical billing space so we are trying to connect with as many companies are uh, as possible that is out there okay so these are the prominent companies that are listed for placement these are the mnc companies and we will after the training program we will be providing you with placement assistance in the aforementioned companies that are out there on that note we will be winding up medical billing and we will be shifting towards medical representative the medical representative training program okay now medical representative in a very layman term or in a very simple term they are basically pharmaceutical sales representative their job is to sell medicines in the name of the company the primary responsibility is to promote and the some sell the company's product they will act as a link between the pharmaceutical company and the healthcare provider their job involves visiting the medical offices their job involves hospitals clinics meeting health professionals na, to provide them with the uh, whatever the data that is out there okay basically their job is to stay there and to basically the job is to stay there and to pitch the product they have to visit a respective hospital they need to pitch the product they need to pitch whatever the medicines that are that have been made by a pharmaceutical company okay and just like the job role since you can understand mr job roles are more based on the vocabulary it is a more vocabulary based job role the training program has been made in that way only it has been synonymous with the job role since it is uh, it has much to do with the sales with the communication hence we have focused more on that segment these are the six subjects or the six pillars of success i would like to call it it includes the communication skills the product knowledge the sales technique the regulatory and the ethical guidelines the pharmaceutical industry knowledge and the practical on field experience all these six subjects will be covered within the medical representative training program bit by bit i'll just give you a brief overview of whatever the subjects that will be covered one is the communication skills it will focus upon developing the effective communication skills with the healthcare professional basically the objective here is ki you need to have a you need to have a good 
effective way, a good effective communication interpersonal skills so that you can build a rapport with a particular healthcare segment. Suppose there's a hospital or a clinic, you need to pitch a pharmaceutical product to it. You need to pitch a pharmaceutical product to it. For that, you need to know certain skills. You need to have a great communication skills. You need to have an amazing interpersonal skills. And moreover, you need to know the skill of building a rapport. Building a rapport basically means ki you need to establish a relation, a good relation, like in, like in a very good talking terms. And you need to handle the questions and concerns rapidly. There's a term called uh, objection handling, which will be discussed uh, earlier as well. Okay. Okay. Now, second segment is about the product knowledge. Comprehensive understanding of the pro product that is promoted. The objective is to acquire the depth knowledge of the pharmaceutical products and the medical devices. The key components that will be covered in this, the features of the product, the benefits of the healthcare professional, the indications, the usage, the side effect and the precautions. These, uh, these things will be covered in this particular segment. Third segment includes the sales technique. We will learn the effective presentation skills, objection handling, negotiation, relationship building. All these topics will be covered because it is very essential that you are aware of these things. That you are very well aware of all the sales techniques like objection handling. Basically, objection handling is if suppose a candidate has come to you, they, they have uh, given an excuse. Okay, they have given you an objection. I, have, I don't have time. I don't have the money resources. That way, you need to handle it. You need to have an instant... Uh, no, yeah, that you need to have an instant reply to it. Okay, relationship building, these things will be taught. It is very critical that you have all the presentation skills, object handling techniques, negotiation skills, and again, relation build, uh, building strategies. And somewhat you might be analyzing key, it is more over a communication based course. Medical representative 60 to 60 percent is the pharmacy, the technical knowledge, 40% is the communication skills. At the end, see, theory is one thing, practicality is another. You can give enough theory knowledge, but the way you're presenting it in front of the public, the way you're showcasing your talent, the way you're showcasing your knowledge, the way you're presenting the product, that will get you sales. And hence, this particular medical representative training program is particularly focused upon the communication and the skill technique and there are certain technical subjects that, that are covered in the name of industry knowledge. Like you'll be understanding the pharmaceutical landscape, you'll be gaining the knowledge of the industry structure, the regulation, the market dynamic, the whatever the regulatory environment, now what is the current market dynamic, what are the current trends, these things will be taught. Then like just like in medical billing, we had a regulatory uh, body. We have, a, we have a subject, we have HIPAA, HIPAA compliances in the name of regulation. Similarly, we have a regulatory guideline. We have certain regulatory subjects in medical representative as well. You need to uh, know the ethical standards of the pharmaceutical company. You need to understand the legal and the ethical standards, the compliances, the regulations, whatever the industry codes of conducts are there. Whatever legal, the legal framework, these things will be taught in this, sub, in this particular segment. And once you have gained enough practical knowledge, uh, theoretical knowledge, you need to apply that theoretical knowledge in the real world scenario. And with that respect, the sixth segment will be there. It will be talking more over the application part. There will be case studies, there will be projects, there will be on-field experience, there will be practical applications of skills. And the, in that way, the six subjects of the medical representative will be covered. And just like medical billing, we even have, just like in medical billing, we even have placement assistance in medical representative as well. These are the few companies that are tied up with placement. Coming to eligibility, the students have to be a final year student or a graduate. You need a graduation degree at least in order to get uh, enrolled into the training program. The duration will be four to six months. Okay. And these are the companies that are listed for placement. Yeah. On that note, we'll be moving on to the next uh, segment. The next segment talks about the... Yeah, just give me one minute. The next segment talks about the pharmacovigilance, the certification program. Okay. It is a certification program. What is pharmacovigilance? I'll be telling you guys in detail uh, what this particular segment, people who are from the pharmacy background, people who are from the life science background, uh, they are quite aware of this segment. This is a very trending segment. And I'll be discussing in detail. Like I'll be telling you in a very layman term. And whatever the topics that are covered in this certification program, that also I'll be discussing with you guys. Okay. So, just give me one minute. Yes. 
सो फार्मोको विजिलेंस फार्मोको विजिलेंस इज अ क्रूशियल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द हेल्थ केयर सिस्टम इट इन्वॉल्व द साइंस एंड एक्टिविटीज रिलेटेड टू द एडवर्स इफेक्ट टू एनी ड्रग रिलेटेड प्रॉब्लम विजुअलाइज विथ मी देर इज अ मेडिसिन देर इज अ मेडिसिन इट हैज सम लाइक इट हैज सम टेरेबल आफ्टर इफेक्ट अपॉन इफ इट ऑल यूर टेकिंग कंज्यूमिंग इट देर इज अम टेरेबल आफ्टर इफेक्ट that after effects need to be detected it needs to be assessed it needs to be understood and it's need to be, uh, it needs to be prevented anything synonymous that is that is related to countering an adverse effect of a medicine that particular segment is called pharmacovigilance the primary goal of pharmacovigilance is to improve the patient safety is to ensure a rational and effective use of medication there are four stages in it detection assessment understanding and prevention bit by bit we'll be covering each and every aspect again in a very layman term through visualization i'll try to explain it to you imagine a superhero he is keeping or he or she is keeping us safe from the bad bad side effects of the medicine that is what pharmacovigilance is all about there is there are certain bad effects of a medicine that superhero is preventing us from it and that particular superhero is called pharmacovigilance apart from that they are like the medicine detective they will look out for any they will look out for any thing that is troubling within that particular drug and there are certain phases there are certain phases that detection that assessment the these or are taken care by a respective individuals the segment the concept is called pharmacovigilance i'll repeat it again any segment that deals with preventing preventing any sort of an adverse effect from a medicine that segment comes under the purview of pharmacovigilance the word itself is called pharma covigilance that means medicine and vigilance means to have an eye upon everything as simple as that i believe you have got the idea of what pharmacovigilance is then we'll talk about the timeline the timeline says he the the doctors and nurses they are the first line of defenses they notice the unusual reaction the patient might had after taking the medicine they are the first line of defense because they are the ones who will be looking up like suppose a person has taken a medication they are seeing certain adverse effect in it they are the first people to detect it right if at all you are having certain kind of suppose you are having a minor headache after taking a medication or some kind of an allergy they are the ones you will be reporting to first no so they are like the first line of defense they will detect it then it will be assigned to the pvc experts they will understand they will try to find the patterns of the bad side effects once they have they are done with the report they will be sending it to the scientist the scientists they are the brains of the operation they'll be figuring out why these side effects are happening and how to prevent it for in the future as simple as that they will be looking over these things and then once the scientists have done their job it will be sent to the regulatory body and the regulatory body will make sure that the respective pharma companies are being honest about the potential side effects i will take regular actions in so that in any case that uh that particular if at all the particular drug has a adverse effect it needs to be countered and if at that on that adverse effect is not getting countered then it needs to be stopped as simple as that regulatory agencies will be the will give a final stamp uh, will give uh, a final stamp over everything as simple as that so like i mentioned again the first line of defense will be by the doctors and nurses they will notice the unusual reaction then the pharmacovigilance expert they will be the detective they'll collect the report and they will check for any sort of bad patterns then there are scientists based on the report by the expert they will be like that the brains they will look over everything and then the regulatory agencies they will act as an enforcer and they will make sure that the the regular the necessary actions are being taken care of okay on that note again the course timeline this is more over the theory certification it doesn't has much of practicality just like medical bearing and medical representative but it is more over a theory certification but it will help you scale your career if at all you're thinking about medical as if at all you're thinking about pharmacovigilance six subjects will be uh, covered in this segment 
six modules will be covered the time duration is two months since we are in a time crunch i will be telling about the subject just like uh, we'll be going module by module first module it will talk about the adverse event any expected unfavorable event it can be as as simple as a minor headache or it can be as uh, life threatening as in some kind of an electric reaction this particular sub segment will be covered in the body one second module will be about adrs it is like a subset of uh, adverse effect anything uh, like uh, that has happened from any type of reaction that has happened from the medication then you will be talking uh, we will be talking about the origin of uh, modern pharmacovigilance there was an incident called thalidomide incident it was it was like uh, the pivot point it was like the main point the crux where things started to uh, change or moreover pharmacovigilance it is basically the origin of pharmacovigilance i would recommend you guys to google about it if else uh, if not then this particular segment will be explained to you in a mentorship program you can click on the respective links that are provided in the chat box to book a session for the mentorship program okay then certain guidelines the principles international council of harmonization this particular segment will be taught it is like an ethical or principle guideline uh, which will help in designing conducting monitoring and auditing the clinical trials that involves human subjects any drugs that involves human subject these things will be uh, considered in it then there is uh, regulatory bodies the institutional review body the uh, institutional ethics committees these uh, things will be taught in this particular segment then we have the second module it is more like a theory most like a history based module it has segments related to drug uh, drug, uh, drug discovery the edward jenner smallpox vaccine how the dr the drugs okay how the medication things originated then the history of clinical research how clinical research it started for a particular uh, country okay then there are certain research process as per gcp single ascending dose multi maximum tolerated dose then study designs in clinical trial control trials crossover trials parallel trials blended trials these things will be taught coming to module 3 this module will dive deep into the heart of pharmacovigilance so that you understand what is adverse drug reaction okay concepts like med dra will be taught expectedness uh, expectedness of adverse event what is the difference between known and unknown the d challenge concept the re challenge concept these are the technical terms that will be explained in the third module coming to the fourth module this module will dive into the practical aspect ensuring medication and medical safety the following topics will be covered in it safety measures data recording preventive strategies risk analysis all these topics will be covered under module 4 module 5 it will delve with the crucial aspect of the ethical conduct you might be noticing each and every certification of the training program courses that we have kept under our belt each one of them has some kind of a eth ethical or regulatory guideline to it because you need to be equipped with that knowledge you also should know how things happen and why it happens as simple as that so this model will uh, will uh, particularly focus upon the ethical conduct the regulatory frameworks international drug monitoring now whatever the different like this who's international drug monitoring program international council of harmonization guidelines that way then there are certain national pharmacovigilance regulations for each country these will be touched for each country for for example in india the body is called cdsco that way these the, the regulatory the regulatory part will be taught in this the reporting guidelines what are the guidelines followed by different companies there is yellow card for uk there is ciomms one for india that way the reporting guidelines will be taught in it then there is then finally there is a module 6 this module will deal particularly with the psur psur is basically it is a safety report which a pharmaceutical company they need to submit on a regular interval they can i can submit in every 6 month or they can submit in the first three years okay and it will summarize all the data that is out there and india is also planning they are making platforms where there is a pv pi platform there is a yellow card system basically a yellow card system is ki any patient they can directly report to a healthcare professional they can directly report in the events of an adverse uh, drug uh, reaction and india is also planning certain things in that way so these subjects will be taught you might have got an idea ki this particular segment this entire segment is a certification course it is a theory subject it will give you the necessary knowledge to scale your career in the pharmacovigilance sector on that note 
we will be moving forward we'll be moving forward to our final training program the medical tourism executive training program it is again a certification program before we understand this training program it is very crucial and very critical we understand what is medical tourism is now any person they are leaving their own country and they are traveling to some other country only and only for medical purpose any person of any origin american canadian african they are leaving their own country they are traveling to some other country for medical purpose that is called medical tourism and we have few certain case studies there is a cost based case studies suppose a patient in america it is very costly for them to avail a service what they will do they will look up for similar service for in some other country they will travel to that country and get the treatment done suppose a particular patient they are in nigeria they are not happy with the services over there they will travel to india and they will avail the services for quality purpose suppose there there, are, there aren't enough doctors good doctors that are available in russia again they are traveling to india and getting the services suppose there's a person in sri lanka it is very cumbersome for them to travel to some other country so it, it is convenient for them to travel to india itself and suppose there's a person in myanmar okay or some other place okay they are let them more culturally inclined to india so they are traveling to india to avail the services so for medical purpose with whatever the case study whatever the back end reasons they have it can be cost based quality based availability based convenience based cultural preference based they are coming to india they are availing the medical services that concept is called medical tourism i believe i have very clearly made you understand what is medical tourism is it is a very growing segment we'll be discussing upon that part why medical tourism is a very trending topic coming to the medical domain or the healthcare domain okay before we try to understand now, now since we are done in the stuff with the medical tourism now we'll try to understand what is the training program about or what a particular individual will be doing once they are completing the medical tourism training program Here's an image. It is a very complex image, but don't worry. I'm your mentor. I'll be explaining this image to you very clearly. Okay, just follow the narration that I'm about to unveil. Suppose there is a patient in America. They have been diagnosed with some kind of a heart-related disease. The American uh, doctors have said it will cost you fifty thousand dollars. to get the medical services now what does this patient does he contacts to a medical tourism executive in india he sends him their report that report is sent to a hospital in india the doctors in india they will assess the condition of the patient if at all they think that it, it isn't a very like the patient is not in an emergency zone what they can do is ki they can give a second opinion and they can ask the patient to wait for some time if at all the situation is too critical what they can do ki they can make up a plan suppose they have made a plan ki no no it won't cost $50000 in india the same services will cost $10000 kindly schedule your trip and come and give in the services this information will be passed upon to by through the executive to the patient what the executive will do he will look after all the charges he will figure it out okay the transportation and the hospital management and administration i can add in another 5k and i can make it a full fledged plan of 15000 dollars and that way he can send it to the patient and anyway you can pitch ki anyhow it is much cheaper than the 50000 that your respective country is charging and in that way very slashed price you can very well see the services have been slashed by 70 to 80% so anyhow the patient will be convinced to come to india to get the services that way he will send a plan and accordingly the plan will be made if at all the 
the people they are coming from uh, uh, america if at all it is very convenient for them to travel and they don't need visa assistance they can simply book their flights if at all the the candidate is from some other uh, country suppose a person is from uh, Mm, uh, let's say from a uh, like suppose they are from Nigeria, okay. So they are having troubles regarding the visa. The visa approval will be done. Uh, the visa assistance will be provided by the medical tourism executive. And once the plan is been scheduled, the patient will travel to India. The patient will travel to India, and from there, right from the airport pickup to getting them administered to a hospital. To manning, managing all the operational things from managing the, the surgery, the post care rehabilitation, the spa treatment, the after the post surgery treatments or whatever the things, like everything, every single operational aspect will be covered by the medical tourism executive. They will make sure that a smooth flow of transition is happening and the, the whatever the uh, candidates are whatever the patients are they are going through a few smooth transition phase and apart from that once the uh, like once the treatment is done and dusted they can plan their way back to the respective country and that particular follow up care will also be managed by the medical tourism executive so in short in a very name and term i'll be summarizing that a patient planning their medical services or planning to avail of medical services within an Indian soil, every managerial aspect of it, every operational aspect of it will be taken care by the medical tourism executive. They will be like a managerial people looking after each and every aspect, looking after each and every operational thing that is there to be done. Okay. Apart from that, apart from that, they will be working as an interpreter. Suppose there's a language issue, suppose there's a candidate from Russia, he's unable to understand India or something like that way. They can act as an interpreter, they can act as a communicator as well. Suppose there's a patient who's traveling all alone. They 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 don't they are they don't have the time, they don't have the they're not in the mindset to get a SIM card or some some kind of phone. In that case, the communication part will also be handled by medical tourism executive. So, in short, you might be getting an idea. It is a multi-dimensional role. And it is not like it is a rewarding role as well. If at all, you're handling so many aspects of a particular service, you will be handsomely rewarded for it. And it is a multi-dimensional rule. So I believe I have made you understood what medical tourism is, what is the role of a medical tourism executive. Like I mentioned, each and every segment that we have, it is synonymous with the job role. You have seen that pattern in medical representative. You saw that pattern in medical tour, uh, medical billing. You saw that pattern in pharmacovigilance. The same pattern we are following in the medical uh, tourism as well. Just like the job role, we have designed the training program. Like the first segment will be medical tourism. It will be introduction to medical tourism. It is like an ecosystem. Just like this mentorship program is an ecosystem, right? You guys are part of this ecosystem. You guys are, are trying to understand. You are in the ecosystem of learn medics. You are the ecosystem of medical tourism. I'm trying to make you familiar with this concept. That way, the students will be familiar with what is medical tourism is. They will, theoret theoretical things will be covered. What is medical tourism? What are the famous medical tourism destinations? Like, uh, uh, to the best of my knowledge, gene therapy is very famous in India. India is very prominent about uh, and uh, well known about gene therapy. Then, what are the healthcare systems that are worldwide? What are the systems? What are the the, the micro things? Now every every technical details will be taught. Then again, legal and ethical considerations. These things need to be taught to you so that you guys are equipped with all the knowledge. The quality and patient safety. Whatever the accreditation systems are there, there is an accreditation system called JCI. Okay, what are the accreditation systems? Now these things will be taught to you. Then patient and exp uh, experience and care. And emotional consider it as an uh, emotional aspect of the subject. You, you will be given case studies, you, know? you will be given that what are the, th the ethical part, the ethical part that what are you need to do in this case. Suppose you come across this patient now, or how you need to handle it. Suppose the patient is offering you some uh, that way and case study, an ethical case study that will be covered. The cultural part will be covered to it. The marketing and promotion, because this is a growing segment, you need to know how to market. You need to get a hold of the client so that the client is 
again uh, like uh, attached to you or there you have you need to create a, uh, you need to build a very good relation with them okay this particular aspect will be covered then pricing and financing how you're keeping your pricing okay suppose you have uh, made like i'm i'll be charging 10 to 15% of all the managerial things so this kind of a pricing that you need to set now because you are working on ground now that is a very dynamic job role you are doing the pricing will be dynamic as well you can't put a fixed price on it then whatever the healthcare trends that are out there what are the currently things that are happening uh, gene therapy then the alternative uh, therapy are, are the current medical trends that are out there then networking and industry contact because you need to maintain a very good contact then risk management whatever the risks that are involved how to manage it these things will be taught business development because you are making an industry right from the grounds so the business development part case studies again whatever the theoretical knowledge you have gained just like then mr whatever the theoretical knowledge you have gained you need to apply that in the form of case studies so just like i mentioned just like the job role of a medical uh, tourism executive needs to be we have designed the training program what are the job roles consider the medical tourism training program as a base it is the base you need to take the base knowledge and it is at a root level once you have taken the base knowledge you can bifurcate with your job role see the tour the training program will give you the base knowledge and it will give you an infinite opportunities every individual are like every individual out in this mentorship program you are skilled in certain way right someone is good at coordination someone is good at administration someone is good at speaking someone is good at teaching so based on your job role based on your individual skill you can take up the medical tourism training program and then accordingly you can branch out or you can bifurcate as the image explains over here if at all you are good in coordination you can become a medical tourism coordinator if at all you are good in administration you can become a medical tourism administrator if at all you are good uh, in like if at all you have a very good knowledge of the uh, the destinations that are out there regarding medical tourism you can become a travel consultant and if at all you are very good your culture is sound you are very good at communicating you have that emotional angle you have the emotional aspect with you you can become a cultural liaison expert you can be an accreditation specialist if at all you are you have an eye for details you can look over things you, you you can become an accreditation specialist you can award jci certifications to hospitals or some kind of a certification to a hospital but in that case you will need to do certain other certification programs as well you can go into the business development like you can build your own uh, setup of medical tourism some kind of a consultancy and you can also move your career towards the research and analysis you can help existing medical tourism company to scale their career with your research and analysis like i mentioned certain job role you can be a medical tourism executive you can assist the patient you can handle the entire shebang you can look over the medical you can be a coordinator right from planning their medical travel coordinating them everything can be done with you, by, by you you can be a sole tra travel advisor you can sit on your home you can pick the right medical destination and the right healthcare provider for a particular person then you can be a travel coordinator you can coordinate the patient entire trip from booking flight from arranging hospitals that way and you can be operation executives like you can manage a bunch of group of people by assuring personal case managers to each person and just your your job will be to ensure a smooth flow of things for each respective patient you have assigned a manager who will be looking after things okay that way like i told you the sky is the limit you can branch out your career just by taking a base of the medical tourism training program and the rest is up to you whatever the skill set you have now you can hammer upon it now again why medical tourism so as our honorable prime minister mentioned in a two day national conference of in of medical colleges dated 17 september 2022 basically the idea is to make india the healthcare capital of the world basically it is to attract foreign tourists because in their respective country it is uh, like there's a humongous uh, charge they take for any medical services and the similar kind of a services in in india is, is being provided at a very subsidized cost and moreover the projection of uh, 2025 is ki by 2025 a 13 billion dollar worth of a market is going to be of the medical tourism and uh, there, there are a number of government initiatives which i have already discussed we are simplifying the medical billing process and uh, like there are other statistical reasons as well 
like the nascom report of 2022 they have said ki in india total 1100 hospitals are there that are jci certified we are second in the world right after america so this is a huge number 1100 hospitals that are jci certified we have the largest pool of doctors 1.3 million doctors 2.2 million nurses then we have a report with the british council that have said ki english is the second most spoken language so it is a great space for the tourists to come and communicate they can easily communicate with any respective person and it is quite easy to find any respective manager then there are certain awards india has got the medical tourism uh, like uh, the third most popular medical tourism destination award by the medical tourism association the global healthcare travel council has given a medical tourism destination award and moreover cost effective treatment like i have already discussed and 10000 dollar worth uh, like 50000 dollar bypass surgery in usa similar kind of a surgery can be done in 10000 dollar and india is moving towards alternative therapy as well total 1.7 million tourists have come for ayurvedic and yogic yogic treatment it is a current medical trend that is going on and it is attracting the followers foreigners and moreover again i would like to mention the government is actively participating government has launched a heal india mission 2020 to promote the medical tourism in 2022 they have maintained key 200 crore they have given to promote the medical tourism sector right after this conference and we have very good reasons to support this 13 billion dollar worth of a market statement on that note i will just mention the course duration it is of 3 months any person who is a 12th pass can easily enroll uh, they will be provided with a training certificate with letter of recommendation and in internship assistance from our end on that note i believe i have covered all the four segments of learn medics a tad bit i'll discuss about the company apart from the four courses that i mentioned we are also focusing upon nutrition and dietics we are also running n number of campaigns to bring more and more certifications program that are medically inclined currently we have more than 250 plus students you can very well find their testimonies in our website it is learnmedics.in i repeat learnmedics.in the links might be provided uh, it it i believe it is provided in the in the chat as well you can access it from there or it will be provided in the respective whatsapp group as well you can go out there browse about us get to know about the company we are running a bunch of campaigns we have learn medics mbpl it stands for medical billing premier league uh, it is type of a, a scholarship exam that we are hosting regarding medical billing you can check out about it then there are campaigns that we are running your opinion matters the ca- the name of the campaign is your opinion matters people from the life science and the pharmacy background i would recommend you go to the website you go out there there are certain suggestion box do let us know there are certain certification programs we are planning to bring like uh, uh, clinical data management quality quality assurance regulatory affairs pharmaceutical microbiology you can drop in your suggestion as to why this particular certification is important and what are the certificate programs you would be excited uh, to bring and then then we have star program by learn medics in this we will be are hosting it is uh, like a employment awareness program just like the one we are having these are the success story of learn medics these are the people that have got selected from our end in gpat and nipa okay these are the people with the respective rank you can find the testimonies in the website as well i would highly recommend that you go and visit the website on that note we'll be winding up the session thank you for joining everyone yeah sai kiran thank you abhinit sir thank you so much it was really awesome session uh, it was uh, really helpful for uh, each and every one thank you thank you as for suggested uh, we can grow 10x by uh, learn medics uh, yeah uh, it's uh, we can see the details like uh, how you are preparing for the course and uh, yeah yeah megna uh, i believe uh, the mic is muted now because it is only view view only so i think uh, you can write your acha uh, the uh, chat section is also uh, guys actually this is a view only segment uh, if at all you have any doubts Uh, if at all you have any doubts i would recommend to fill the feedback form please fill the feedback form visit the website you can text in the respective whatsapp group as well we'll be handling your uh, queries whatever the doubts you have since this is a view only segment i don't think you guys can uh, write in your comments or you can you can just view only 
So whatever the Google forms that have been shared, the feedback form, the post registration form, make sure you're filling it and uh, uh, make sure you're going through it, the website, each and every aspect of it. You can drop a message in the WhatsApp group also. Or you can personally text to Sai Kiran as well. Or anyone, basically. Yeah. Yeah, one more thing I would like to mention. Uh, if at all you're enrolling from uh, us, uh, from the Swasa group, uh, there is an instant 25% discount for all the Swasa users for whatever the respective training programs are there. If at all you know uh, want to know in detail about the pricing and everything, I would highly recommend you guys to book a session. And that you can do by filling the Google form. Because this is the view only section. Actually, we were trying, we tried a lot to uh, rectify that setting. But nonetheless, uh, the point was to deliver a message. The point was to tell you in detail about what is Learn Medics, what is Learn Medics doing, each and every aspect about it. If you want to know further details, I would highly recommend you to fill the Google form. You will be getting respective calls from our associates. Please fill the form so that our team can connect with you. Yes. Whatever the feedback from the coastal users, form, everything. Yeah, Anamika, Sneha, I believe uh, you might be having some certain queries. Uh, sorry for that. I have extreme apologies from our side. Uh, this segment is only view only segment. Uh, we'll try to rectify things the next time uh, for sure. So I would recommend please fill the Google form and your queries will be taken up. Whatever the doubts you have, all the queries will be taken up. Yes. So on that note, it was great having you guys. I think I was a good mentor. Please make sure you're filling the feedback form. Please make sure you're filling, uh, you're visiting the LearnBetics website and you're getting to know. Please try to reach out people as well. And yeah, please do visit the website and we'll get back to you for sure. We'll get back to you for sure. I believe you guys are having a bunch of queries. It will be handled, rest assured. That is the promise that I'm making you guys. Okay? Okay then. On that note, we'll wind up the session. Thank you guys. Thank you for joining. It has been great connecting with you guys. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Abhinitsu. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.